The Steelers went out and signed two outside free agents. The first time they've done anything besides their own guys in the 2021 free agency period. Neither of them are starters. Neither of them are big name guys. They got Joe Haig and Miles Killebrew, one out of Detroit, one out of Tampa Bay. For those that I, I didn't know this, Donnie told me about it. For those that don't know who Joe Haig is, he's the guy who dropped. He's the offensive lineman who dropped the touchdown pass in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. I didn't I didn't realize that was him. I didn't think that those guys had real names outside of Zach Banner. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. I will say this. And we'll, we'll talk about this. I'll open this up to you first. But I think both signings have more impact than people think. And I, I, I'm i personally all for small, low-end signings that replace some of the guys that you still need. Yeah, and I, I guess we could start with uh, Miles Killebrew. I mean, we were talking about him before we started the podcast. He's a uh, he, safety, you know, from the Lions, drafted in the fourth round, um, like you had told me. Um, slowly but surely, his play diminished play time, diminished over the, the years that he was in Detroit. Um, last year for the Lions, he played one defensive snap for the Detroit Lions, but 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 crucial special teamer played the second most special team snaps for the Lions. I think he played the 80 percent of uh special team snaps, so you know, really really big guy. You know, the Steelers love their special teams aces. Jordan Dangerfield hasn't been re signed to the team yet, so if he doesn't find himself back in Pittsburgh, Miles Killer Brew kind of takes that place for him. And I mean, let's be real. He's an NFL veteran. I, uh, you know, went from strong safety and a linebacker. Um, you know, think of Marcus Allen whenever you think of the the transition that Killer Brew has made. Um, he, he he's another body. You know, he's a body for special teams. I think he provides a little bit of depth uh, to either the linebacking core or the you know strong safety or free safety room. You know, wherever the Steelers see fit for him. I wouldn't expect to see him in a lot of defensive packages, but I see this purely as a special team signing. But it, it's a pretty good one. You know, if if you're gonna go get a guy strictly to um, you know whether it be punt or you know kick returns, whatever it might be, he's a guy you definitely want to have on your team. Yeah, I agree. I think this replaces Jordan Dangerfield, which, you know, some people are upset, but at some point, Jordan Dangerfield's kind of getting expensive. Last year, I think his contract was like $1.9 million. That's a lot of money for a special teams guy, especially when you guys like Derek Watts still on the team. So I do. I like Miles Killebrew, who it, it comes in. He's now the new special teams ace, probably replaces Jordan Dangerfield. Most likely a cheap signing. We don't know what the numbers are yet, but I would imagine it's right around a million dollars, which is, you know, fine. He's I don't see him even taking the field on defense. Not like probably not. I think Marcus Allen is that right now is that yes. guy that's going to come in He for for one. Marcus Allen is another special teams ace. And for mm -hmm. two, he'll play a little bit more defense than Miles Killebrew will. But it's still important. The Steelers love that. Last year was the first time in a couple of years that we really saw the Steelers special teams be a factor at all. We, if anything, they were struggling, struggling bad. And then they went out, got some guys. Derek Watt, again, huge signing. Didn't do anything on offense for $12 million, not worth it. But our $9 million, not worth it. But to play special teams, he's doing okay. And then now you had Miles Kilbrew, who's young, pr probably more athletic, has a little bit more juice in the tank. It's not bad. Joe Haig on the other side. I love the Joe Haig, sign Haig signing because, for one, it – leaves the door open for that left tackle that we keep talking about for Zach Banner or Chuksa Korfor to transition to the left side, fill both roles. If that's how the Steelers want to approach this, nobody wants the Steelers to approach this like this, but if that's how the, how they plan to do so now they have a backup tackle who could also play the jumbo role. So we could roll with that. They have a couple of options inside. It, it just rounds out their offensive line for like a, what if situation, if like, maybe a worst case situation and add some veteran presence. I mean, Stephen Wisniewski didn't do anything for the Steelers last season, but he was a veteran from day one, which helped some of the younger guys like Kevin Dotson, Kevin Dotson and Stephen Wisniewski had had definitely a close relationship or at least a closer relationship working as the backups early in the season. And Hague's going to be the exact same thing. He's coming in as a veteran guy with some young guys around him and needs to teach him how to play in the NFL. That's how I look at it. Yeah, and I, I think this is a classic Steeler signing. You know, a, an offensive lineman who's not exactly a perennial all-star, but not exactly, you know, a, a 
undrafted rookie free agent either. I mean, he's a very versatile guy. He can play guard or tackle, which definitely kind of satisfies satisfies excuse me um, the the tackle need on the left side. In a worst case scenario, um, I still think that left tackle is something that needs to be upgraded at some point. Uh, but at the end of the day, they they, they still filled out their depth at those positions, especially uh, with a guy like Gerald Hawkins, who's yet to resign and some of the other offensive linemen that are kind of stray from 2020. But no, I, 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 I think there's some potential with this move. Um, but John Ledyard, who, uh, you know, formerly of the draft network and uh, currently with the pewter report said that he would, they plugged him in one week, Tampa Bay did at a at tackle. And he was so bad that the next week they completely reshuffled their entire offensive line. <laughs> This is that true? Did that really it, happen? It, I I don't watch the Buccaneers, but John Ledyard is pretty knowledgeable football guy. So I yeah, mean, yeah. When, something I'll when he says something I'll listen. But yeah, we'll see. You know, it, all, all it takes is a new, fresh start. You know, different scenery for a guy to you know kind of change their style of play. But I, I saw that in the back of my head. And I'm like, mm, this isn't good. That's not good. That's not good at all. I wonder if like how many offensive snaps he played since then, or was the missed pass in the Super Bowl just like out of nowhere? Somebody was just like, "Hey, hey, Joe, you're up. You're on the field." He was just like, "What?" Eating a bag of chips like on the sideline. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Even, I don't even Gatorade in the cooler for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't even doesn't even know where his helmet is. It's like down on the other end of the bench. Uh, that's crazy. I didn't know that at all. That's terrifying because at least Gerald Hawkins stepped in once or twice and like did what he needed to do. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Hag apparently is so bad that we might, I mean, could the Steelers offense get even get worse offensive line, even get worse. I don't know. I don't even know, but maybe gonna we're going to find out, I guess that's wild. I didn't, that, that should leave a major concern in everybody's head. Cause we just hyped this guy up for like five minutes. And then you were just like, but also, he basically <laughs> but, his offense. watched him last year was like, no, this guy, this is Indeed. not him. This is this, there's a reason that he's signing for 1.5 million. He's all, his cap hits only 1.5 million dollars this season, and and apparently that's it. I don't know. We'll see. I guess either way, it adds some depth. It adds some much needed depth. Depth, and they stay below the salary cap. So the Steelers need that. 